I'm your host, Locum 23. You're joining me for Drumline Chapter 9. You're camped out on your bed with your laptop open to a Netflix movie and a pint of pen Ben and Jerry's at the ready. Laren invited you over for a night of dinner and hot, sweaty sex. But he didn't show. And now he's texting me like he can just talk his way out of it. With a sigh, you put down the ice cream and check your phone. I'm sorry. I just... I'm just getting home. I didn't realize it was so late. I had a huge fight with my dad today, and then I drove around to calm down, and I lost track of time. Your anger wavers. If there's one thing you understand, it's fighting with your parents. I... Uh, I know I did. Can I come see you? I can bring over steaks in 30 minutes. You left me hanging with no word. I put on eyeliner and sexy underwear. Okay. I shaved everything. Everywhere. <laughs> your eyes scan the room while your brain kicks into overdrive. You want Larry to understand that he made a big mistake. Yeah. It was lost this time. Why are you not understanding he did fight with his dad, though? What did you want him to do? Meet up with you and be really f***ing angry? He's getting a selfie of my ass. Me licking ice cream off a spoon. Me in my pajamas. You quickly take a picture and press send. Sorry you missed out tonight. Maybe we should slow down and try again another time. Turn off your phone and eat the ice cream and binge watch Netflix. I'm not going to think about him at all. The next four days, you barely say more than two words to Laren. They're text, but they're stilted. This morning, your phone pinged with a text message. Can you get uh, to practice 30 minutes early? I miss you. You didn't respond, but here you are waiting in the equipment room for him to arrive. Maybe we'll finally get a chance to talk. I mean, it can't end well, but I can't resist him. The door creaks open, and you swallow hard. Your palms feel sweaty. Showing up early doesn't earn you brownie points, huh, Chad? Hello to you, too, Marco. You did a shitty job on my room this week. Do better next time. Oh, no, we're not putting jock itch powder. No, 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 no. I can think of some far worse things to do to this guy. You flip him off as he leaves the room. Bubba and the rest of the crew file in and back out to the practice field. Laird never shows. Okay, this guy is starting to be a flake. Guess it's a missed opportunity. Again. When Smith finally arrives, you walk out with him to the field. He's chattering about his upcoming class schedule and other stuff that you barely pay attention to. Right? Mm-hmm. Laird is already on the field, and he stripped his shirt off. The sun glistens on his abs. He's drool-worthy. Really? You fantasized about drizzling Marco in warm caramel, too? What? Don't even joke about that. I'd rather soak myself in a vat of battery acid than look at Marco drizzled in caramel. That seems a little extreme, Batman. <laughs> Every time! <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about Marco, right? Battery acid. That wasn't my point. My point is, you've been off in La La Land, and I've got important things going on. Biting your lip, you give Smith an apologetic look. Sorry, Smith, I'm preoccupied. Uh, picturing a certain someone, oomph. The rest of a sentence is cut off as your elbow connects to his wrist. Did you get your schedule yet? Class is starting next week. I did. I think we have bio together. Marco and Laird are huddled over a clipboard. Today they're announcing who is going to be marching on the field this weekend. What if I didn't make the line because I'm not good enough? Worse, what if it's because Laird is upset about my request to slow things down between us? Or maybe he got what he wanted. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Wait, no, he didn't have that yet. Think about it, we never had that. Marco glances in your direction and scowls. You can interpret the look, but your muscles stiffen in response. Larry doesn't even look at you. You okay there, Batman? You're looking a little tense. Gotham City has been a little rough this week. 
This is so goddamn cute. I need someone like this in my life. You force your shoulders and to relax on clutch your jaw. Wanna grab dinner after this? We could... There, it clears his throat as glittering green eyes are pinning you down. Uh, I hate to interrupt you guys setting up a date, but we have the practice to get through. Our first game is Saturday, so today is primarily a dress rehearsal. Uh, before we begin, we need to officially announce who will be marching on the field when the Sharks take on Louisiana State this weekend. Oh. Well, this is it. Oh god, I can't watch. Me, Marco, Bubba, Van, Charlie, Morris, Topher, Cade, Smith, and Reese. Time slows. Is it in your head, or did his tone change when he said your name? It sounded like a caress, but then that could be wishful thinking. Arms wrapped around your shoulder, lips smack against your temple, knocking you back to reality. We did it! I... can't believe it. I thought for sure that I'd fuck this week. No way, Batman. You're the best. So, Robin, we're the best. You hold your fist out to him to, for a fist bump. You're both grinning like maniacs. For the next two hours, your cloud of happiness is impenetrable. You say that until Marco comes. As you put your drum away after practice and solidify plans with Smith for celebratory pizza, you can feel Laird's presence looming. You drop your sticks twice before he finally picks them up himself. Uh, Reese, catch up with you in uh, a few minutes. Smith. I need to talk to her about her timing during the first song before she leaves. Your spine snaps straight. Twin spots of fury darken your cheeks. There's nothing wrong with my playing and being called out in front of everyone like that? Oh, hell no. You are on to defend yourself, but stop short when you see his eyes. So many things flicker through his green irises. Confusion, hurt, desire, and patience. Laird fidgets as he waits for the rest of the team to clear the room, and your stomach churns. When the room is empty, you can't hold it in any longer. There was nothing wrong with my stick work today. No, there wasn't. This easy agreement gives you pause. I'd miss you, Reese. And I wanted to apologize for last Saturday. You straighten up cautiously. You're going to need to choose your words with care. Look, Laird. You just do you. I've got some time to think about it, and listen, we were moving fast. A slow burn of a grin cr crosses Laird's face as his gaze devours you. It's cool. Don't sweat it. You don't owe me an apology. I don't blame you for needing a break. Yeah, about that. His lips cover yours in a hungry swoop. One palm cradles your neck while the other supports the small of your back. You respond immediately with no pretense, no trying to push him away. Ah, <sighs> I want him so badly. Your mouth clings to his as he presses you into a darkened corner of the room. You sigh against his mouth and he takes advantage, tangling his tongue with yours. Tell me you don't want this. Tell me your heart isn't racing as fast as mine. His thumbs caress the underside of your breast. Tell me to stop. There it... I can't. His breath exhales in a rush of disappointment. Your lips find his, pleading for understanding as you press up against him. Say you understand why I can't do this here. I have to make this team on my own merits. Laird's lips return your kisses, bordering on feverish intensity. Your breasts tighten, and you can feel his hard length pressing against your hip as he guides you further back into the room. I understand. Laird presses his forehead against yours, his breath ragged, tears prick at your eyes from the emotion of the moment. Forgive me, Reese. Say you'll forgive me for Saturday. Please don't push me away. His lips skim over your cheek, the corner of your mouth, and the tip of your nose. Please don't shut me out. With a shiver, your hands roam over his waist to his ribs, where it's filmed possible, and then the door to the room bangs open. What are y'all still doing in here? Oh, God, you could ruin anything in this world. You could ruin, like, reality television by just your presence. And I hate reality television. The blood in your veins freezes and you can't move. Your eyes meet layers in a blind panic. 
Laird puts a foot of distance between you, keeping his back to Margo. Uh, she needed to work on her stance before this weekend. Her shoulders were slumped. Her arms were too low at practice earlier. It's nine inches, Reese, not six. Oh! Clever! Your eyes widen at the double meaning of his words, and he winks at you. You choke back a laugh before you hear Marco snort in disgust. Told you we shouldn't have picked her. It's not a problem. Lair drops his hands and moves back a step. You bristle at the insult. I'm gonna make her do it over and over and over again until she gets it right, even if it takes her all night. <laughs> uh huh. Double and Tom to there, buddy. Images of you doing it over and over again all night. Car will through your mind. Your breathing stutters out as your brain shorts. Need any help? No, we don't need any help from you. The offer from Marco is grudging at best, and the words are sour. No, I can handle her. Dear Mother Mary and her perfect virgin womb, yes, he can. Oh my god, really? Who does this? <laughs> like, I just want to hear someone else utter those words out of their mouth. Really? Saturday night during the game, you nail all your beats. The crowd is cheering as hard as the drum line as they do the football team. After the crowd clears out, Laird grabs your hand and starts walking. Where are we going? He doesn't answer. Said he asks his own questions. How'd it feel? Your first game with the crowd watching you and cheering for you. I... Can't describe it. It was exhilarating. Mmm, I got something exhilarating for you in my pants. Jesus Christ, man! That surprises a laugh out of you, which no shit. I bet you do. Did your parents watch? What, the thing in your pants? No. They don't have cable. TV is a waste of a perfectly good time to them. Still, to see their own, their only daughter? I don't honestly have cable either. Like, I have it for my brothers, but I would not honestly take um, cable for myself. I, I don't even have a TV in my room. Just FYI. When I play my PlayStation, I play it on my monitor. So, just saying. You turn your head and scrunch your nose and layer it. I'll send them a link to the YouTube video of it if you're so concerned. Hmm. Were your parents here? No. Ah. His voice is flat, but he doesn't slow. You suddenly realize that you're in a darkened space of the stadium. There's nobody around. What are we doing here? I'm doing something I've been fantasizing about for weeks. Oh. And what's that? I'm going to make you come right here in Shark Tank Stadium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we went from twice the growl to just, why are we surprised by this? I don't know. Your mouth makes a little O oh with surprise and your pulse speeds up. We could get caught. I know. That's why it's such an exciting fantasy. On the other hand, the thought of doing this makes you throb between your thighs. On the other hand, if you're caught, you could be expelled. Laird, I don't think this is a good idea. Are you afraid of getting caught, Reese Holland? Your body shudders against us. Yes. You are afraid, but you want him so desperately that you ache in the depths of your core. I want to kiss every inch of your body on the 50-yard line. Sands massage her. Press as his tongue plunges into your mouth. Mm. He's been the next 15 minutes in heaven as Laird works magic on your body with his tongue and hands. Later that night, when you're back in your dorm, you can't help but realize this is not taking its low. I want to say this is just lost, but it's starting to feel like more? No, it's still pretty much lost. Your phone dings beside you, it's Laird. Can we try for round two this week? I've got a test that I need to study for. Rain check? Next Saturday? Stay the night? Are you sure? Absolutely. 
You bite your bottom lip as your mouth curves into a smile. It feels a stupid idea to get your hopes up, but you can't help yourself. Reese, say yes. Yes. I just hope he doesn't stand me up this time again. Oh, look. An app. <sighs> so, hope y'all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head in the description below. Links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. It's greatly appreciated. Um, otherwise, remember to hit that like and share. And we are growing to almost 9,000 subscribers. It's an amazing feat. And I thank each and every one of you that watches my content that we're up to that number. And um, hopefully I can keep entertaining you folks, and hopefully you do enjoy my, my content. I try the best I can, even though I'm super goddamn tired right now, but I digress. Um, yesterday was kind of a really sluggish day, basically, and I just didn't feel good late last night. I was going to do a chill stream after Walking Dead, but then I kind of just was like, yeah, I'm crawling into bed and dying. Um, and yeah, I did just that. So, stay tuned for chapter 10 of Drumline, um, and then we'll either do the Academy or Vampire Girl. Something tells me, unfortunately, since it is um, 8.30 my time right now, then unfortunately um, it'll come down to getting either Vampire Girl or Academy done, which I might go with Academy, and we'll say Vampire Girl for um, in the morning tomorrow before Choices, I guess is the best way to do that. Um, unless we do it after choices. One of the two will happen, I guess we'll see. Um, with that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.